Hi everyone, uh, we are back here at uh, the Le Grandeur Hotel in Jakarta and I'm still again with uh, Lucky Noob. Uh, I wanted to have some uh, more private time with you to discuss about some, um, some OC related events that happened here in Indonesia in the last uh, three months. So you have been involved with ACES uh, on uh, doing some events across uh, Indonesia and you were there you were doing two different events, basically all grouped at the same time. Could you like uh, just tell us basically which events and what it was about? Okay, uh, main, the main thing is uh, there is like a three uh, ACES uh, plan to held like three small events. The first one is the basic overclocking seminar, just you know teaching the new user about overclocking, and the second one is the basic overclocking competition. You know, just like with the standard heat sinks using AMD Lanos CPU, and then this competition which using all the AMD processor but uh, with liquid nitrogen cooling. Uh, I've been helping ACES for like uh, two or maybe close to three months because we went to like five or six uh, major cities in Indonesia Jakarta, Surabaya, Bandung and also Bali and then uh, we held an overclocking competition there and also we are having a, a basic overclocking seminars Can you tell us like for the OC seminar basically what was the plan of one seminar? What was the, the layout? Like uh, which were the different uh yeah, the different themes you were talking about. Basically, what I'm teaching them in the OC seminar is, yeah, you know, like kind of basic overclocking. I just told them uh, there's a thing called overclocking, and you you can push your hardware without uh, without buying new hardware. I mean, uh, you can just push your uh, your hard your old hardware maybe to get some more processing power or something. I'm s I start really really general. I mean, no uh, no specific stuff. I just told them yeah, you can overclock. My Intel, EMD is all the same, and then I also I teach them about uh, you know like uh, overclocking community in Indonesia to give them you know like some kind of general view of overclocking uh, community in Indonesia and also I told them uh, actually in Indonesia and also in the world there is an overclocking competition so if if you're into of uh, if you're into computers and like uh, you know messing up with your hardware you know so uh, that's what I'm told them and actually the the contestant for this uh, I mean the people in the seminars were quite quite large. I mean, uh, almost more than 50. More than yes, more than 50 new users come to the seminars, and uh, we talk about stuff, you know. And even after the seminar, there's some kind of user just want to, you know, uh, know where the overclocking competition is going to be held, and what about big overclocking uh, competition in Indonesia. You like uh, teaching people about overclocking? Actually, I try as best as I could possibly do because you know I'm not the best in Indonesian overclockers, but I still try to you know give them general view of overclockers because um, when people uh, usually new people learn no uh, they know about overclocking all in their head is like oh no it's so hard it's so difficult but actually with all the overclocking enhancement in all the motherboards today you can actually pretty easy do overclocking maybe just one button overclocking. Some kind of thing, but uh, in your reply in your question, I like teaching people about overclocking. <laughs> yes. Like, what is the feedback of the pe like you said, like 50 people usually attend those events. Like, uh, are those people usually like more students or like uh, gamers? Uh, we are doing the OC seminar in the college, so mainly there is a college student and uh, most of them also gamers and would like to you know get more performance out of their PCs without buying new hardware so I think uh, they are liking the OC seminar and also after the seminar they was asking me you know like where to find overclocking materials I also uh, for for those who already involved in overclocking I also inform them about uh, the HW bot so they can know this is where the big games begin so something like that what is the feedback of those people are they like do they really uh, enjoy those events do they those people told you like uh, it's okay like this it's not too much uh, ASUS but it's more OC than actually branding 
actually I told Asus from uh, for the uh, from the first time they asked me into the uh, to help with the event. I asked them that I want to make the OC seminar as general as possible and without any kind of you know I don't I don't even mention the the the, the feature I just mentioned you know like all general motherboards can do this can do that and and so all the people doesn't think you know because uh, some people really hate it when 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 there's too much branding in one event so when i just men mention it in a general way and even even in the overclocking seminar there's many many questions and they were used uh, when i asked them what hardware are you using i'm um, uh, they're using not not uh, they're not using asus product they they are using may, maybe dfi products a bit product very old pcs and and as I asked them, all our products can be overclocked like that. So basically, uh, mostly we get a positive feedback from this event. That's it. What is the main purpose for um, for ASUS and also for along alongside the OC seminar of that kind of small competition for like uh, like beginners? I would say. Okay, for the junior overclocking competition, it's involving uh, EMD Linux uh, platforms. Uh, maybe Asus also want to introduce their uh, FM1 lineup. Uh, so they uh, they say to the people, uh, there is an online qualification for each region, for each city. It lasts like maybe two or three weeks per region and then there are three with uh, top three results were came out and then uh, they are get selected to go to the junior overclocking finals but the the regulation is pretty simple uh, only heat sink cooling allowed and also they need to bring their own cpus and motherboards they have to use asus fm1 motherboards actually there's some kind of you know some feedback about uh, about using Asus FM1. Uh, maybe some overclockers in Indonesia doesn't like the AMD Lano platform too much because they think, ah, it's so slow. I I prefer to play with Intel's. Yes, yes. It, it I I'd rather play with Sandy Bridge or maybe even a uh, bulldozer or something. And so actually the. The competition went well, but some people says that I I want it to be more hardcore than this one. So uh, the I think the Asus actually trying to promote the FM1 because for budget gamers there is a hope you know for using very low budget system and having a quite good gaming experience. So that's why they're trying to push the FM1 lineup. What What is your opinion on that kind of event? Should it be like? Uh a priority for brands instead of making big OC events for the elites, or like uh, should it come as well along the qualification for the big events? I think um, I, I'm speaking for Indonesia. I mean, for for the overclocking community to grow, you you need both the the extreme and hardcore overclockers, and also you need new ones. You know, uh, overclocking competition can be a bit boring. Um, you know, if the 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 guy who wins like oh he's again, oh he win again. I mean. Uh, he win last year. He win last year. I mean, I mean that that's also good. But some maybe we need some new faces every one or two years. So I think uh, rather than big event, big event is also is also quite useful for you know marketing and you know uh, a get together. I mean, the 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 thing that I like the most with the big overclocking event because you know I get to see the faces. You know, I get to see you know oh he's he's very famous in Korea for his overclocking or maybe from Brazil. And also, uh, if Asus asked me to make uh, some kind of event like this, maybe uh, with the more extreme, I mean, maybe uh, OC seminar with Alan to, uh, like you said, teach him to pro uh, insulate properly, to you know the difference and the scaling with the Allen 2s. I think it's it's good because actually in Indonesia the overclocking community is pretty big, but they are scattered everywhere. So uh, s yes, the country is really large. So we uh, actually there's many many uh, good overclockers out there, and sometimes we j uh, I just want to you know like we get together and bench stuff something like that. Yes, kind of like a LAN party, but like yes. a, a bench party. Like yes, uh, bench party. try to keep trying the the barbecue spirit, yeah. you know, but like uh, with your friends and but doing overclocking instead of yeah. playing Counter Strike or yeah. something else. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's really interesting to see like uh, how it works here in Indonesia. It's really different from yes. from the Western countries. You have like easier access to LN2, then we have very complicated one or at least very expensive access. Yes. 
and but you have more expensive hardware like uh, yeah. and we have like maybe a little bit less expensive hardware yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe you should like make an exchange or something yeah. <laughs> we send you hardware you send us an n2 <laughs> <laughs> right, thank you very much thank you very much thank you